by now, I'm sure most of you have played or at least know someone who has played the new Pokemon Go app. It has gone extremely viral and it seems like you can't walk around outside anymore without seeing someone catching a Weedle on the sidewalk or taking on Team Valor in their reign of terror. I mean, seriously, go Team Yellow. But anyway, uh, could it be possible though that there's more than meets the eye with this app? A recent article on Gawker written by Ashley Feinberg has opened my eyes to what the government is actually could be doing with our data that it receives from the app. Now I'm just going to paraphrase and kind of skim through this article, but if you want to read the full article, I'm going to leave a link in the description. And again, I did not write this. This is completely by Ashley. She did a great job on this. I just felt the need to share this with you guys and get this out there farther, make a video. So again, all credit to her and her research team over there at Gawker. Anyway, let's look at the evidence, starting out with the obvious, which is the privacy terms and condition of the app itself. They are incredibly liberal, and if you actually take a look at them and read them, you may be kind of surprised by them. Of course, I mean, you expect them to use your location and you expect them to use your camera because those two things are essential to the game. They need to have your location and they need to use the camera to augment the Pokemon onto the screen. But you don't notice that you're also giving them access to basically everything else on your phone and in your Google account. I mean, just take a look at this right here. And if you read a section from it, it says, quote, we may disclose any information about you or your authorized child that is in possession or control to the government or law enforcement officials or private parties. That means that they have all this information about you. They have control of your emails, of your pictures, of your location, who you're with, all this type of large amounts of data and you're just giving it to them. And they're basically saying, we can do whatever we want with it, whatever we see fit. And you're just saying, okay. And you're not even reading it. I mean, the crazy amount of power that kids are just giving to these companies just to get a chance to catch a rat on the toilet is absolutely insane to me. I mean, who knows what they're doing with your emails, your contacts and everything else, but it gets worse. Pokemon Go comes directly from an intelligence gathering community of companies whose sole purpose is to gather massive amounts of data on its users. As Ashley points out in her article, quote, Pokemon Go was recently created by Niantic, which was formed by John Hankey. Now Hankey also just happened to found a company called Keyhole back in the day. And Keyhole was purchased back in 2004 by Google. Before that though, Keyhole received funding from a firm called InQtel, a government controlled venture capital firm that invests in companies that will help beef up the government's tool belt. It's what's more is that InQtels gave Keyhole mostly the money it came from the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency or NGA, whose primary mission is quote, collecting, analyzing and distributing geospatial intelligence and if you're still on the fence about this we can check out this excerpt from the nga's in-house publication called pathfinder magazine it says quote companies obtain customer information through avenues such as social media mobile apps and customer relationship management software again mobile apps social media that sounds an awful lot like Pokemon Go, now doesn't it? That sounds like they're describing it exactly. And all of this can be chained back to Niantic, to Pokemon Go, and that can be chained to your phone and your personal information. So what exactly is the government doing with our information though? Why should we be concerned? Well, Pokemon Go is an ideal vessel for the many, many eyes. I mean, think about it. With millions of people playing this worldwide, they can keep tabs on everything you do, where you go, who you're with, what you're likely to do next, and so on, and they can base patterns on this. A Reddit user by the name of Fight For Everything explained it best when he said, quote, obviously intelligence agencies have gained a lot of info from Google Maps and its street view, but this data was collected easily with driving cars. Intel agencies may see Google Maps and Street View as just an outline or skeleton of the whole picture. Getting more data, particularly that of the street and inside buildings, requires tons of man hours and footwork. And it's a complete logistical nightmare. 
This, however, is where Pokemon Go enters. Where if you are an intel agency and you want photos of the inside of a home or a business, you just spawn a desirable Pokemon or related objects in that area. And you let totally unaware and distracted citizens take those photos for you with devices that they paid for that you don't have to pay for. The citizens pay for the expense. Imagine all those photos are going back to a database without the augmented Pokemon, obviously those are removed, but they are being GPS tagged as well as people's phone numbers are giving them all this kind of data and they have all these different angles and views. These photos could be put together much like we see in Google Street, but if you could map the entirety of an inside of a building. So as you're catching them all with the other sheep, what you're actually doing is making it incredibly easy for the CIA and other government agencies to get a first hand look into just about every square inch of the world. You very well may be creating a cache of high resolution data rich images that are getting siphoned directly into databases used to keep tabs on you. Now as user fight for anything also explains he says quote what if a local church or a mosque if they suspect it of terrorist activity it's all hypothetical but what if they want photos of inside of it or photos of the cars around it when their license plates who's entering photos of that they want the numbers of who's in there they want the data from who's in there well what an easy way to get all that information as to spawn a rare pokemon near that mosque or better yet inside of it how many countless people would funnel their way in there trying to get that Pikachu, trying to get that rare Pokemon that it's harder to find? And they would be taking all these high resolution, data rich pictures, all of this stuff of the surrounding areas and be siphoned back unknowingly right back to the intelligence gathering information agency that needed it, that wanted it, that wanted to keep tabs on you. Exactly. Mind blown, right? And if you think that's crazy, you may be right, but it also makes perfect sense. I mean, this to me just seems out of this world crazy, but like I said, could it be happening? I don't know. Hopefully it's not, but I, I wouldn't put it past it, especially with the stuff going on in this country right now. So before you go on your journey to become the very best, I think it's wise to at least think twice about what you're giving up in exchange. All of these rights to your phone, to your possibly your emails, your contacts, your location, all of this information is more important than people give it credit for. You should really consider that before you go out and just give it away willy nilly on these apps while you're trying to catch a well, Weedle. It's really, is it really worth it? I mean, personally, I'm not gonna stop playing this game because I love Pokemon and it's so addicting and I can't stop and I really have nothing to hide. So if the government wants to spy on the inside of my apartment and see how nerdy and loser I am, then they can go ahead, I guess. But for you, it may be different. You may have different opinions on this. But thanks again for Ashley Feenberg over at Gawker for writing this amazing article. You should really go check it out. I only got to touch on the, the basics of it. She goes into so much more detail. So please go check that out. Link in the description. Also down in the comment section down below, let me know what you guys think about all this. Do you think it's still worth playing? Do you think the government's actually doing this? All that kind of comments. I want to get a good discussion going on down in the comment section. Also, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to leave it a like as it helps my channel out a ton. Plus, it will help spread this video around. It'll get the word out about this conspiracy. So the more likes, the more shares on Facebook we get on this video, the more people become aware of the situation of what's going on with this new viral game. And it could save some people down the road. So make sure you guys are liking and subscribing and all that kind of fun stuff. But remember, it's always K-Mac time somewhere, guys. So take it easy. Until next time, peace out.